to the deep dive. Today, um, today we're going to be exploring the Shamana Quantum Code. Oh, very cool. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a healing modality okay. developed by Shima Shad Ru. Okay. And we've got excerpts from her book yeah. that really dive into energy healing, right. spiritual growth, and ancient wisdom. Cool. And it's a pretty captivating blend. Yeah. You know, it's designed to address those imbalances we all kind of face, whether they're physical or emotional or spiritual. Yeah. But before we get started, I do want to remind you that this deep dive is for informational purposes only. Okay. And it is not a replacement for professional medical advice. Of course, yeah. So with that out of the way, yeah. I mean, what are your initial thoughts when you hear about this Shamana Quantum Code? Um, I mean, it's fascinating how it pulls from so many different traditions. Okay. You know, it's like weaving a tapestry mm -hmm. with threads from ancient wisdom, okay. modern energy healing, yeah, spirituality, I like that. and it really aims to get to the root cause of your imbalance, mm -hmm. not just addressing the symptoms you're experiencing. Okay. So like a holistic approach. Yeah. 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 Very much so. Now the book starts with this powerful quote from Nikola Tesla. Okay. Um, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Yeah. I got chills reading that. It's a good one. What do you make of this? I mean... And how does it relate to the Shamana Quantum Code? It truly resonates on so many levels, don't you think? Absolutely. Modern physics and ancient wisdom yeah. are converging on this idea. Right, think... Everything is energy vibrating at a unique frequency. Mm -hmm. And you know what's truly fascinating? What's that? Even our thoughts have their own vibrations. Whoa. Okay, so you're saying that our thoughts can actually impact our reality? That's the idea. That's where the law of attraction comes in, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. The Shamanic Quantum Code emphasizes this link between your thoughts and your experiences. You might recall Gandhi's famous quote, Man is the product of his thoughts. What he thinks, he becomes. Right. Yeah. Think about it this way. Yeah. Every morning you wake up and you have the choice to step into a sky tower elevator. Okay. You can either go up or down. I like this. Okay, so going up in the elevator would be like choosing to raise your vibration. Precisely. Okay. Going up symbolizes raising your vibration mm. through practices like meditation, mm -hmm. gratitude journaling, mm -hmm. and those powerful I am affirmations you see everywhere. Right, yeah. It's about making a conscious effort to shift to a higher frequency. Okay. But, of course, uh, life doesn't always make it easy. Right. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah. I know for me, stressful days at work can feel like hitting that down button on the elevator. And yeah. suddenly I'm just, you know, spiraling. And that's where the real work begins. Right. It's about being mindful of when you're starting to descend. Okay. And making a conscious choice to step back into that upward flow. Right. The Shamana Quantum Code reminds us that we have the power to choose our vibration. Yeah. Even amidst life's chaos. I like that. Yeah. Now, the book takes kind of a different path from some spiritual practices, right. particularly when it comes to self-denial. Mm -hmm. It seems to really emphasize heart-centeredness. Okay. Can you unpack that for us a little bit? Absolutely. Yeah. It's about shifting the focus from the mind, okay. which can be a battlefield of self-denial and self-centeredness yeah. to the heart. Okay. The heart, as described in the Shamanic Quantum Code, okay. acts as a bridge between your physical and spiritual self. Mm -hmm. It's where you connect with the universe through love, compassion, yeah. and that deep well of wisdom within. So are you saying that by focusing on our hearts, we can actually tap into a deeper understanding of ourselves and like the universe around us? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and here's a beautiful concept from the book. Okay. Think of your heart as a filter for your thoughts. Okay. It's like Rumi's poem, The Guest House, where every thought and emotion is a guest welcomed without judgment. So instead of pushing away those negative thoughts, we should welcome them into our hearts. Yeah. That seems counterintuitive. The key is not to dwell on them, okay. but to let them rest in the heart's love and compassion. Yeah. This transforms those potentially disruptive thoughts into sources of peace and understanding. Okay. You could say it's about turning them into blessings. I like that. The book suggests practicing heart-centered meditation to cultivate this. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? That's a beautiful way to look at it. Yeah. I can already see how this shift in perspective could be incredibly powerful. It is. But how does this heart-centeredness actually manifest in our lives? Well, the book dives into the connection between the third eye and the heart chakra. Okay. Represented by the symbol of infinite love. Okay. 
Think of it as a visual reminder of the merging of intuition and love. Okay, break that down for me. Sure. I know the third eye is about intuition and insight, but how does it connect to the heart? Think of your pineal gland, okay, which is physically located in your brain mm -hmm. as a filter for universal wisdom. Okay. It often gets clouded by the limitations of your conditioned mind. Right. Connecting your third eye to your heart allows that wisdom to bypass those mental barriers yeah. and flow directly into your heart where it's experienced in its purest form. Okay. It's like shifting your reality from being mind-based to heart-centered. So in essence, we're talking about moving from a reality often governed by fear and limitation yeah. to one of love and infinite possibility. Precisely. I like that. And the book suggests that this heart-centered reality brings a sense of coherence. Okay. Where your mind and body are in sync with the natural rhythms of the universe. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, this is where the visual elements of the shamanic quantum code start to come into play, right? Yes. The book talks about 12 rays of light emanating from the heart. Mm -hmm. Can you expand on that? Each ray is a unique frequency with a specific color and corresponding guardian angel. It's reminiscent of those stunning stained glass windows you see in cathedrals. Yeah. Bathing the space in colored light. Okay. The book even mentions how ancient Persians used colored glass for healing. Oh, wow. Highlighting that this wisdom has been around for centuries. Yeah, so each ray carries a different healing vibration. Exactly. Like a spiritual toolkit. Yeah, you could say that. Okay. Like, let's imagine you're facing a creative block. Okay. The book might suggest working with the orange ray okay. guided by Archangel Uriel, mm -hmm. which resonates with your sacral chakra, the energy center for creativity and passion. Okay. It's about tapping into the specific frequency you need to address a particular challenge. That's fascinating. Yeah. Are there any specific rays that stand out to you as particularly powerful or that you've had personal experience with? You know, I've always been drawn to the pink ray. Okay. Associated with Archangel Chamuel. Mm-hmm. It's all about unconditional love and compassion. Oh. For me, it's like a warm embrace. Yeah. Helping to heal old emotional wounds and cultivate self-love, mm -hmm. I found it to be incredibly soothing and restorative. That resonates with me. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to learn more about the other rays yeah. and how they can be used for healing and personal growth. Yeah, we can definitely explore that. But before we get too deep into that, sure. the book also mentions 16 Ascended Masters. Okay. It's like having a spiritual dream team at your disposal. It's a fascinating concept, isn't it? It is. These ascended masters are enlightened beings who have achieved spiritual mastery. Okay. And are there to support us on our journey. Mm -hmm. Each master is linked to a specific crystal. Okay. And just like those rays of light, okay. each crystal holds unique healing vibrations. Okay, now I'm really intrigued. Yeah. Can we dive into a few of those masters and their crystals? Absolutely. I'm eager to understand how they connect to the shamanic quantum code. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's start with Master Jesus. Okay. Who is associated with rose quartz, the stone of unconditional love. Okay. Imagine holding a piece of rose quartz mm -hmm. and feeling that gentle energy radiating through you. I can almost feel it now. It's very calming. Yeah. It sounds so calming and reassuring. Mm -hmm. What about some of the other masters? And their crystals. Well, Master Buddha, for example, okay. is linked to clear quartz, the master healer. Okay. Known for amplifying energy and intentions. Okay. Think of it like a magnifying glass for your spiritual practices. So if I were meditating with clear quartz, it would amplify the effects of my meditation. Exactly. Okay. God. It's a powerful tool for enhancing your connection to your higher self mm -hmm. and amplifying your intentions for healing and growth. This is incredible. Yeah. I can already see how the system starts to weave together. It all connects. How the ra the masters and the crystals all work in harmony. Yeah. I'm excited to keep exploring this further. You mean too. Yeah. The Shimano Quantum Code is full of such rich symbolism and practical tools. Mm -hmm. There's so much more to uncover. And speaking of weaving things together, the Shimano Quantum Code also incorporates principles from Taoism. Okay. Specifically, the connection between planets, elements, and your internal organs. Okay. Now that sounds intriguing. I know a little bit about the five elements in Chinese medicine, yeah. but how do planets fit into this? In Taoism, the five planets, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, and Mercury, are each associated with one of the five elements and specific internal organs. Okay. They influence our well-being on both the physical and spiritual level. Okay. Think of it like this. Each planet has its own unique energy signature. 
Okay. And that energy interacts with your body's energy system. So let's say I'm having some digestive issues. Which planet would be associated with that? In that case, we'd look to Saturn. Okay. Which is linked to the element Earth yeah. and the spleen and stomach. Okay. It governs intellect and transformation, mm -hmm. especially the, the transformation of food into energy. Right. If Saturn's energy is out of balance, it can manifest as digestive problems. So would the shamanic quantum code suggest working with Saturn's energy to help heal those digestive issues? Exactly. Okay. Might involve visualizations, meditations, okay. or working with crystals that resonate with Saturn's energy like hematite okay. to help restore balance and harmony to your digestive system. This is starting to make sense now. The book also talks about the shamana etheric chamber. Okay. What exactly is that and how does it work? Imagine this. Okay. You're lying on a luminous white bed positioned over the sacred geometry of infinite love. Okay. This is the shamana etheric chamber, a space where healing takes place on an energetic level. Okay. It's like being transported to another dimension while your physical body remains grounded here. Okay, I'm starting to get a picture of this. So what happens in this etheric chamber? A Merkaba, a powerful symbol of spiritual transformation that's nestled within the sacred geometry, begins to rotate. Okay. Restoring balance to your energy field. Healing light from the 11th dimension flows into your crown and third eye chakras activating these energy centers. So it's like a supercharged healing energy that's being directed to specific areas of your energy body. Exactly. Okay. Then a lotus flower descends from your third eye to your heart. Okay. Symbolizing the merging of your mind and heart into a state of pure coherence. I'm really starting to see how visually rich and symbolic this modality is. Yeah. It sounds like an incredible journey. It truly is. Yeah. And it doesn't end there. Yeah. 16 ascended masters, each radiating their unique healing energy, appear around you as golden crystal spheres. Oh, okay. Finally, the five planets from the sacred geometry of infinite love begin to rotate around you. Okay. And the planet that resonates with your specific condition becomes the primary healing force. It's like a cosmic ballet with all these forces coming together to orchestrate healing. Yes. I'm starting to understand how the Shamana Quantum Code integrates so many different elements. It's very holistic. But how is this actually applied in a healing session? Well, a typical session starts with grounding and centering. The practitioner, using the power of visualization, connects to the white healing light of Shamana. Okay. Think of it as setting the stage for healing. Okay. They then connect with you, discuss your challenges, and together you set a clear intention for the session. So it's very much a collaborative process yeah. with both the practitioner and the client actively participating in the healing journey. Absolutely. Okay, cool. From there, the practitioner guides you into a state of deep relaxation. Okay. Often using meditation techniques to activate your chakras and connect you to the source and Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. This prepares you to receive the healing energies. Okay. If the practitioner is trained to access the Akashic Records, they may open your records okay. to gain insights into your soul's journey. That's incredible. So you're essentially tapping into a deeper level of awareness, yeah. uncovering potential blocks and patterns that may be contributing to your current challenges. Exactly. Okay. It's like peeling back the layers to get to the root of the issue. Yeah. Then you're guided through visualization into the shamana chamber of healing. Okay. Where you're lying on a white bed positioned over the sacred geometry of infinite love. It sounds so peaceful and transformative. It is. So is this when the healing light, the angels, the masters, and the planets all come into play? Yes. Okay. As the practitioner channels light into your crown, third eye, and heart chakras, your angels and masters appear, offering their guidance and support. Okay. A hologram of your body may even emerge highlighting areas of imbalance that need attention. So it's like having a team of spiritual healers yeah. working together to restore harmony and balance to your entire being. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful concept. It truly is. And once the healing work is complete, the practitioner guides you back to the present moment. Right. Making sure you're fully grounded before ending the session. Yes, it's about gently bringing you back to earth. Yeah. After such a profound experience. And I imagine that grounding is really important after working with such high frequencies of energy. Absolutely. The practitioner might offer additional guidance. Okay. Like listening to a recording of the session mm -hmm. using specific crystals okay. or practicing grounding techniques. Speaking of techniques, the book mentions something called cortices tapping. Yes. What's that all about? Cortices tapping is a fascinating technique borrowed from the body talk system. Okay. It's about restoring the body's natural healing ability okay. by balancing your brain hemispheres. Okay. The practice itself is pretty simple. Okay. 
It involves a specific tapping sequence on your head. Okay. To stimulate the brain's central integrative state. So it's like giving your brain a gentle nudge to reset and rebalance itself. Precisely. Okay. It's often used at the end of a shamanic quantum code session. Okay. To seal the aura, balance the elements within the body, okay. and ground the client. Now, I'm curious about the practical applications of this cortices tapping. Is wow. it something that people can do on their own? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You can use cortices tapping for all sorts of things. Stress management. Yeah. Better sleep. Okay. Improving focus. Mm -hmm. The list goes on. Yeah. But it's especially helpful after energy work. Okay. To integrate the healing experience and bring your energy back down to earth. It sounds like a great tool to have in your self-care toolkit. Definitely. Now, the book emphasizes the importance of grounding and protection after any kind of energy work. It is essential. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Think of grounding as reconnecting to the earth's energy. Okay. After working with higher frequencies. Okay. Imagine it like plugging yourself back into the source. Yeah. Yeah. There are many ways to ground yourself, walking barefoot on the grass, mm -hmm. visualizing roots growing from your feet into the earth, okay. or working with grounding crystals like hematite. I've heard of using black tourmaline for protection. Yeah. Does that fall under the umbrella of grounding? While both are important for energetic well-being, okay. protection focuses on creating boundaries to prevent energy depletion or unwanted energies from affecting you. Okay. It's like building a shield around your energy field. So black tourmaline would be more about creating that energetic shield. Yes. While something like hematite would be about reconnecting to the Earth's energy. Exactly. Okay. It's about understanding the subtle differences and using the right tools for the right purpose. Right. The book offers a variety of techniques for both grounding and protection. Okay. So it's really about finding what resonates with you and incorporating it into your daily routine. This is all so fascinating. It's amazing how the Shamanic Quantum Code combines these ancient wisdom traditions. <laughs> I know it's amazing. With modern energy healing techniques. It yeah. really is a holistic approach. It is. Addressing the mind, body, and spirit. Absolutely. And one of the most beautiful aspects of the Shamanic Quantum Code is its emphasis on heart centered living. It is beautiful. We touched on that earlier. Yeah. But I'd love to hear more about what it means to live from the heart, especially within the context of this modality. Living from the heart in the context of the Shamana Quantum Code, is about aligning with the energy of infinite love. Okay. It's about choosing compassion over judgment. Okay. Forgiveness over resentment. Mm -hmm. And love over fear. It sounds simple enough. It does. But in practice, it can be quite challenging. It is. Especially in today's world. Yeah. It's not always easy. But the Shamana Quantum Code offers practical tools and visualizations right. to help you cultivate heart-centered living. Hmm. Imagine waking up each morning yeah. and consciously activating your heart chakra, mm -hmm. visualizing it, expanding with love and light. I can already feel my stress levels increasing just thinking about it. Right. It's a great way to start the day. And as you move through your day, yeah. you can consciously choose to respond to situations from a place of love mm -hmm. rather than react from fear or anger. Exactly. It's a practice. Yeah. A conscious choice that we make moment to moment. Every moment is a new opportunity. So it's not about being perfect or never experiencing negative emotions. Right. But about shifting our overall perspective and mm -hmm. choosing love as our guiding force. Precisely. The Shamana Quantum Code reminds us that we are all capable of experiencing and expressing infinite love. It's our true nature. It is. Now, the book mentions the importance of the upper heart chakra, okay. also known as the thymus chakra. Yeah. How does that tie into heart-centered living? The upper heart chakra is located between the throat and heart chakras. Okay. And it's associated with immunity, longevity, and unconditional love. Okay. Think of it as a bridge between your heart and your throat, yeah. allowing you to express love through your words and actions. So activating the chakra would help us to communicate more authentically and compassionately. Exactly. Okay. It's about speaking and acting from a place of love rather than fear or judgment. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, the book also emphasizes the power of gratitude. Gratitude is essential. How does gratitude play into the Shamana Quantum Code? Gratitude is like a magical key okay. that unlocks a higher vibration okay. and connects you to the abundance of the universe. Okay. When you cultivate gratitude, mm -hmm. you shift your focus yeah. from what you lack to what you have, Yeah. aligning your energy with the frequency of love and appreciation. So it's about acknowledging and appreciating the good things in your life, no matter how small. Exactly. Okay. And it's not just a feel-good emotion. Right. 
Gratitude is a powerful energetic force that can shift your reality. Okay. When you practice gratitude, you're essentially sending a message to the universe. Okay. That you're open to receiving more blessings. That's a beautiful way to look at it. Are there specific gratitude practices that the Shamana Quantum Code recommends? The book suggests starting each day by listing five things you're grateful for. Okay. It could be something as simple as a warm cup of coffee mm -hmm. or the sound of birds singing. Yeah. Another powerful practice is to incorporate gratitude into mirror work. Okay. Stand in front of a mirror and repeat affirmations. Oh. Like, I am grateful for my life. I am grateful for my health. Or I am grateful for my loved ones. Those are lovely practices. They are? I can see how incorporating them into my daily routine could make a big difference in my overall outlook. It shifts your perspective. Yeah. Now let's talk about the 16 golden spheres in the sacred geometry of infinite love. Yeah. Which represent the ascended masters and their connection to crystals. Okay. You mentioned this earlier, but can we dive a little deeper into this concept? Absolutely. The book highlights that the number 16 reduces numerologically to seven, right here. which is the number of spiritual awakening. Yeah. It's fascinating how numerology can shed light on the deeper meaning behind these concepts. It is. So the 16 ascended masters represent a path to spiritual awakening yes. through their unique vibrations and teachings. Exactly. And each master is linked to a specific crystal that acts as an amplifier, yes. helping you to connect with their energy and wisdom. Like a tuning fork. Okay, I'm really intrigued now. Can you tell us about a few of these masters and their corresponding crystals? Let's start with Kuan Yin. Oh. The Bodhisattva of Compassion, okay. who is associated with jade. Okay. Jade is a beautiful stone for promoting peace, harmony, and emotional balance. Okay. It's a nurturing stone that can help you to cultivate compassion and connect with your inner wisdom. Jade has always held a special significance in many cultures. It has. Often representing peace and prosperity. Yes. It's fascinating to see how it's incorporated into this system. Right. What about some of the other masters and crystals? Well, Master Saint Germain, okay. Master of Transformation, is ah. linked to Amethyst, okay. a powerful stone for enhancing intuition, spiritual awareness, and protection. Okay. Amethyst can help you to connect with your higher self, overcome addictions, and embrace transformation. And Master Serapis Bay, the keeper of the White Flame of Ascension, is associated with Citrine, the stone of abundance and manifestation. Yeah. Citrine is a wonderful crystal for attracting prosperity, boosting confidence, and enhancing creativity. It is. And Master Hilarion, the master of truth and healing, is connected to emerald. Yes. Emerald is a heart healing stone that promotes compassion, growth, and abundance. That's right. It can help you to connect with your true self and embrace your healing journey. Beautiful. It's amazing how each crystal carries a unique vibration and meaning. I know, right? It's like having a whole apothecary of healing energies at your fingertips. It's a powerful toolkit. The Shamana Quantum Code encourages you to explore these energies to connect with the masters. Yes. And to discover which crystals resonate most deeply with you. Absolutely. Now, the book goes on to describe the Shamana Etheric Chamber healing in more detail, okay. providing step-by-step -step instructions for conducting a healing session. Mm -hmm. It's like a guided meditation yeah. that takes you through the entire process of activating your chakras, connecting with your spiritual support team, right. and experiencing the healing energies of the Shamana Quantum Code. Exactly. Let's walk through it. Sure. First, you start by grounding and centering yourself. Okay. Visualizing the sacred geometry of infinite love mm -hmm. and chanting Shamana Om three times okay. to activate the white healing light. It's about creating a sacred space and inviting the healing energies to flow through you. Okay. Then you connect with the client, discussing their challenges mm. and setting a clear intention for the session. Right. So it's about establishing a rapport yes. and aligning your energies with the client's intentions. Precisely. Okay. Then you guide the client into a state of deep relaxation, activating their chakras okay. and connecting them to the source and Mother Earth. Okay. If you are trained in accessing the Akashic records, mm. you may open the client's records to receive insights and guidance. It sounds like you're creating a safe and supportive container for healing to take place. Exactly. Okay. And then you guide the client into the Shamana Chamber of Healing, visualizing them lying on a white bed, uh -huh. positioned over the sacred geometry of infinite love. I can imagine how powerful that visualization must be. Yeah. Allowing the client to fully immerse themselves in the healing energies of this space. It is powerful. 
And as you channel light into the client's crown, third eye, and heart chakras, their angels and masters appear, offering their support. Yes, they're all there to assist. A hologram of the client's body may emerge, highlighting areas of imbalance or blockage that need attention. Exactly. So you're essentially acting as a conduit for the healing energies, yeah. following your intuition and the guidance of the masters. Precisely. Okay. And once the healing work is complete, you guide the client back to the present moment, mm. ensuring they're fully grounded before ending the session. And I imagine there's a lot of emphasis on post-session care as well, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's important to provide the client with tools and techniques to help them integrate the healing experience okay. and continue their healing journey. Yeah. This might include listening to a recording of the session, mm -hmm. working with specific crystals, or practicing grounding techniques. Now, the book also goes into detail about the importance of following your intuition when conducting healing sessions. It's so important. Can you elaborate on that? Intuition is your inner compass, your connection to divine wisdom. Okay. When you trust your intuition... Yeah. You're allowing a higher intelligence to guide you in the healing process. So it's about being open to receiving guidance mm -hmm. and trusting that you're being led to the most effective approach for each individual client. Exactly. Okay. It's also important to communicate these intuitive insights to your clients with confidence and compassion, mm -hmm. helping them to trust the process and surrender to the healing energies. Okay. The book suggests keeping a journal of your sessions. Okay. Noting any new guidance techniques or insights that come through okay. as a way to reinforce your learning and track the evolution of your unique healing style. That's a great suggestion. It's like creating a personal grimoire of healing wisdom. Yeah, and it's a reminder that each session is an opportunity to learn, grow, and expand your healing abilities. Uh, the path of healing is a journey, not a destination. The book emphasizes that we are all healers at heart. We are. Capable of accessing the infinite wisdom and love yes. that reside within us. Absolutely. By choosing love, compassion, and forgiveness, we can create a more harmonious and fulfilling reality for ourselves and for the world. It's a beautiful message. It is. It's a beautiful message of hope and empowerment, reminding us that we have the power to heal ourselves, to heal others, yeah. and to create a more loving and compassionate world. That's the goal. It is. And the book includes several appendices with additional information and resources, okay. including a sample healing session, outline tips for setting intentions, mm -hmm. a guide to sacred geometry. Mm -hmm. and a chakra activation and balancing guide. Yeah. They're very useful. Yeah. They're very comprehensive and useful. Yeah. It sounds like a really comprehensive and well-structured approach to healing and personal growth. So as we reach the end of our deep dive into the shamanic quantum code, yeah. what are some key takeaways that stand out to you? The interconnectedness of everything okay. is a central theme that resonates deeply with me. The shamanic quantum code beautifully illustrates mm. how our thoughts, emotions, and energy are all intertwined. Yeah. And how this interconnectedness extends to the cosmos, okay. encompassing planets, angels, and ascended masters. That's a powerful insight. It is. It reminds us that we're not isolated beings, right. but part of a vast and intricate web of energy and consciousness. We're all connected. Yeah. And this interconnectedness empowers us to take responsibility for our energy mm -hmm. and our impact on the world around us. Exactly. Another key takeaway for me is the emphasis on heart-centered living. Yeah. It's so important. The Shamana Quantum Code provides a roadmap for shifting from a mind-based perception right. to a heart-centered reality where love, compassion, and intuition guide our choices and actions. It's a profound shift in perspective, isn't it? It really is. It's about moving beyond the limitations of the ego mm -hmm. and tapping into the infinite wisdom and love that reside within our hearts. I completely agree. It's a reminder that true healing and transformation begin with the heart. The heart is the key. The Shamana Quantum Code also emphasizes the importance of energy hygiene. Yes. Being mindful of our energy and taking steps to protect and replenish it. Right. This includes practices like grounding protection and creating a sacred space for healing. It's all part of it. It's about recognizing that we are energetic beings. Yeah. And that our energy is a precious resource. It is. That needs to be nurtured and protected. Absolutely. And the Shamana Quantum Code provides a wealth of tools and techniques right. for maintaining a healthy energy field. Yes. From simple practices like spending time in nature mm -hmm. to more advanced techniques 